Supper at Moorings by Al Brunke. A street, evening. Rain, a cafe frontage, Moorings pie and mash shop, jelly deals, cockles, salt beef. East London. East, hmm? East London, April 22nd, 1983. George, 30s, bookish, well turned out, walks briskly along pavement, Overcoat, upturned collar, flat cap, shields himself from rain with an umbrella. In the other hand, a tan briefcase. Stops outside cafe, collapses umbrella, shakes it out, and shoulders open the door. Busy cafe, white wall tiles, mirrors, marble floor and tabletops. All tables are taken except one by a window set for two with small vase of red roses. Maureen, 30s, clears a table, Cockney through and through, she wears an apron embroidered with Maureen's. The bell above the door dings as George enters. Maureen's face lights up. All right, George. Well, don't just stand there. Come in. George steps in and closes the door. It stands there, dripping. Maureen sets plates down on counter, hurries over to George, helps him off with his coat, hangs it on the wall hook, takes his umbrella and leans it against the wall. We'd have caught our deaths with you dilly-dallying there all night, George. She brushes shoulders of his jacket and pulls it straight, pulls, pushes up his tie. Better. Special night, ain't it? George takes off his hat and hooks it over his coat. His head is shaved, a pronounced scar running across the back. Now sit yourself down. There. Same as every Friday at six. Sorry. George sits at the table. Maureen returns to the counter. George rubs his hand over his head. You think she'll recognise me? With this barnet? Of course she will, darling. She'll love it. George opens his briefcase and takes out the Guardian. Takes a ballpoint pen from chest pocket of jacket. Maureen comes back with a bottle of ale and glass. She pours ale, hands him the glass, strokes his head. It's a part of you now, any road. But when you first came in like that, all Kojak-like, I was upset, don't mind saying. I thought bloody rosers. Invite him in to help us with our inquiries and then beat seven kinds of shit out of the poor sod. No, they wouldn't have dared. Not with Brian breathing down their necks. One of the best criminal briefs in East London is. Different story if I was coloured. Or Irish? No. Drill Dimitri up the Royal London. He's the maestro behind this kipper job. Nice touch them roses, Mo. I want you to do something. Mark the occasion. Year today, ain't it? You're very sweet. Show was packing up early as it goes. Well, she'd only have chucked him out. Pie and mash supper for two, then. A creature of habit, and I. <laughs> you and me both, darling. Suet puff, royads and liquor, day in, day out. All that changes is the bleeding weather. George wipes the peak hole on the steamed up window and looks through it onto the street. Saturday gone. I'm on the bus. I ain't got a scooby where I am or what I'm doing there. So I ask the geezer next to me. I'm only on the bleeding number two down to West Norwood Terminal. <laughs> It's you and your long words, George. If I had a brain like yours... You can have it if you want. <laughs> Not bleeding likely, mate. <laughs> It'll come back, sweetheart. Your memory. Don't you go worrying yourself. You think she'll come? Of course she will, Angel. Flashback. Evening, the same street, April 23rd, 1982. George, full head of hair, suit trousers, jacket over shoulder, and Louise, 20s, pretty cotton floral pattern dress, run along the street holding hands. They go into Woolworths. George takes a bag from the pick and mix counter. They choose handfuls of sweets, dropping them into bag. George goes to counter and pays. Louise goes up behind him, pokes him in ribs. He jumps, cries out in mock terror. 
She points towards a photo me booth, moves towards it and beckons him to follow. They squeeze into booth, pull across curtain and flash. Louise runs out of the store, looking playfully over her shoulder, waving a strip of photos. George shouts, Come here. Come here. Chases her through door and out onto street. End flashback, back to present day. Maureen's evening. The door opens. Louise comes in. George turns, looks over and smiles. Louise takes off coat, revealing same dress. Folds coat over back of chair and sits down opposite George. Hello, George. I hoped you'd come. Maureen comes to the table with two plates of pie and mash. He avoids eye contact with Louise, always looking at George. Pie and mash supper for two. Many thank yous. Don't you go doing all the talking, George. He turns to take another order. George and Louise start to eat. My gaffer, Brian, says he'll advance me the down payment on a new place. One better and a little conversion behind the everyman. Ain't bad to see, but... Gets me on the ladder. And he says the firm will finance a conversion, of course. Reckons I'll be a partner in five years. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Wills and probate solicitor. Don't exactly make me the sexiest catch in the high street, but... You did a first-class job with my will, George. Well, if I haven't, I never had accepted your invitation to supper. You put on the same dress. Do you like it, George? Oh, very much so. I think I want to go into crime, though. Not crime, crime, obviously. A, a criminal lawyer, defence mind. There's some proper goings on in Nick's round here. Jeepers, the stories the gaffer comes back with. You could do that, George. You really could. Most of them poor buggers ain't got a chance behind a cell door. Their word against the bill. <laughs> All this talk of work, you must think me dull. But, well, there comes a point in life when a man has to think about settling down. And you've been thinking about, and you've been thinking about what it would be like to settle down with me. Oh, George, I can finally achieve my dream of living north of the river. Every Friday night, I've been coming here, Louise. Whole year. And every Saturday morning, I say, George, I say, this week, you're going to forget her. For once and for all, you're going to move on, put her behind you. And I'm good at forgetting, Lou. Very good. The cancer's done a cracking job there. I can forget where I've left the ballpoint, forget where I've come in Safeway. And when I leave here later today, I'll be sitting on a bus with diddly squat idea of how I got there. But can I forget you? You see Maureen over there, nice girl, kind. It was her who got the roses, you know. Why do I think I'm better than that? I don't need to live up the angel, get twice again for half the dough in Limehouse. I've been sitting around a whole year waiting for you to... Flashback. Younger George and Louise come out of Maureen's holding hands. They walk to the bus stop and stand there together. She takes a photo strip from her handbag, tears it in half, writes something on the back and gives it to George. He reads it, smiles, and slides it into the chest pocket of his jacket. Same time next week, then. Same time every week, if you like. A peck on the cheek, she turns and gets on the bus. End flashback. Maureen stands by the table. George finishes his last mouthful, dabs at his mouth with a, with a serviette, places the knife and fork together neatly on an empty plate and smiles. Lovely, Maureen. One of your best. Louise's plate is untouched. Cutlery is still by the side. The seat is empty, still pushed in, no coat. 
I'm sorry, love. Maybe she'll come next week. Maureen tears off paper from a pad. Pie and mash supper times two, four pounds. Hands it to George. George takes out wallet from inside jacket pocket, puts four pound notes on the table, adds a 50p from his trouser pocket. Maureen sweeps the notes into her apron and pockets the coin. Very generous of you, George. It won't be next week, Maureen. That was the last. She ain't coming back. She ain't, George. I'm sorry, but she ain't. Well then. Better crack on. He picks up briefcase, puts newspaper in, clips shut. Slips a half strip of photo booth photos out of the chest pocket and lays it on the table. There'll always be a table here for you, George. George leaves. Maureen sees the photo strip, stops, picks it up and looks at it, hurries to the door. George! What, darling? Forgot your hat and your coat. Did I? When was that, sweetheart? Blimey, Mo. I'm all sixes and sevens with this bleeding tumour. One day I'll walk off without my head. She helps him into a coat, brushes it down, rubs his shoulders, hands him his umbrella, puts the hat on his head and tilts it onto the side. Look at you, George Fairfax. They don't make gentlemen like you anymore. I'll be all right, Mo, won't I? Of course you will, Angel. And one day you're going to make some young lady very happy indeed. Do you want this? She hands him the photo strip. He takes it and looks at it. Two photo booth photos. George and Louise hold up a bag of pick and mix, grinning, arms round one another. Then on back, our first date, supper at Maureen's, Lou. Now, darling, you're all right. Stick it in the bin for me, will you? Next week, what time do you get off? I'll ask Shell to cover for me. Same time, then. Same time, George. Street, evening. Through window to Maureen's, George and Maureen sit at the table. They eat pie and mash, talk and laugh. Maureen leans forward, wipes a speck of sauce from the corner of George's mouth. By bus stop, a woman, Louise, wears sunglasses, headscarf and coat with upturned collar, carries a suitcase, watches George and Maureen through window and smiles. A bus pulls up. She gets on and the bus pulls away. Louise Evans not been seen since disappearance on April 23rd, 1982. Her body's never been found. George Fairfax was never charged in connection with their disappearance. George married Maureen in 1984. His brain tumour didn't come back. His memory did. He made a full recovery. He became a partner in Whitechapel Law Firm, Bryant & Co. in 1986 where he practiced criminal law for a further 30 years, specialising in miscarriages of justice. George and Maureen enjoyed their last pie and mash supper together in April 2021, shortly before George's death from COVID-19. Maureen still lives above the shop in East London. It's now a Starbucks coffee outlet. <laughs>